It's me again, Demetrius Andrade. And if you're looking to take your fight game to the next level, try this, the fighter stack. Everything you need. I saw a, um, an Instagram uh, post, I believe, uh, from you, and I wanted to ask you about it. Um, you had mentioned that uh, Golden Boy had promised you a Canelo fight like four years ago. Can you yeah. tell me a little bit about that? So uh, I was signed to uh, Banner Promotions, and we fought Gabe Rosado as a co-feature. Mm -hmm. I think we took the fight on like a three-and-a-half-week notice or something. It was a very short notice. And um, – there was a second contract that was given to Artie Pulo and myself that said, in the event that we win, we will get Canelo in December because they were trying to have Canelo fight three times a year, May, uh, September, and then another one in December. And that year was going to be the first year Canelo fought in December. And they gave me a second contract that said, if you, if you get the win over Gabe Rosado, uh, you'll get the fight with Canelo in December. And this was actually the headline of a lot of things that, you know, before that fight. And even at the, uh, the post-fight uh, press conference, they were, they were asking, is Willie Monroe going to get this fight now? I mean, he came in and did what he was supposed to do. And uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was, I forget whether it was Rob Diaz or Eric Gomez, but one of them was there at the press and they said, yeah, I think he deserves it. I think he deserves to get this fight. And then they said something about Canelo fracturing his hand and then I never heard from him again and, and so for, so so for them to sit there at the post fight press conference and say yes I believe he deserves this fight and then for me to not get it I think it's befitting that four years later I get the opportunity did you ever reach back out to them and ask them hey like what's going on or were you ever given like an explanation as to what happened no, I just took it with a grain of salt and sat on the bench for a whole 12 months before I fought Billy Joe Saunders, you know. Sometimes in, in this sport, you just have to, you know, take things on the chin like a punch and, and keep it rolling, you know. You know, I know it was talked about that a fight between Saunders and, and Canelo would happen. Um, now they're talking about Canelo fighting maybe uh, Triple G and the Saunders fight not happening. Uh, you, you fought both uh, Saunders and Triple G. So I want to get your perspective. How difficult of a fight is a Saunders versus Canelo fight? Because uh, I know a lot of fans felt that Saunders had a really good chance at in that fight. Um, it depends on what Saunders shows up, you know, and, and it also depends on uh, he, he's going to have to be uh, perfect for, for 12 rounds. You know, he's going to have to, you're looking at two counter punches and you're looking at, Canelo, who's slightly quicker, but you would say that Billy Joe Saunders is faster with momentum. You know, he throws a lot more combinations than Canelo would. Um, in order for Billy Joe Saunders to win that fight, he would have to learn how to walk forward and counterpunch at the same time, sort of like what I did with um, Hugo Centeno. Like Hugo Centeno, I knew I couldn't move with him because he's a counterpuncher. So there would be no friction. It would be a boring fight. So I knew I had to press the action, but I also had to be a counter puncher. So what I had to do was press the action and make sure I stayed ahead on a judge's scorecards, but was sharp enough while being on the on the hunt to be sharp enough to counter anything he put out there, which is a very hard thing to do. It's easy to counter a guy with the back foot, but if you have to walk a guy down for five or six rounds and counter him, that's tough. And in order to do that, I think Billy Joe Saunders is going to need top-notch sparring. He's going to need to be in hella shape. Does he beat Canelo, you feel, at, at this point, based on the last uh, performance that we saw on him? Uh, no. No, simply because, I mean, like, I, I really don't know what, if Canelo has any vices outside of the ring. If, they, if, if he does, they've been very hush about it. But we know that uh, Saunders has a lot of vices outside of the ring. And the thing that people don't understand is time and these things catch up to you. This is what, like, um, you know, rest in peace, my, one of my favorite athletes next to uh, 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 prime times, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant would talk about how he would get up at four 
and get, get in four workouts throughout the day when you were only getting in two. And this may not show up in the first year or so, but five or six years down the road, I've made up for time that you can't get back and you can't catch up. And with the vices that he's had, out, has, he's had outside of the ring, with the layoffs and the crazy stuff he's doing on social media, it's doing nothing but hurting me. So I'd be surprised if he has enough left in the tank to beat Canelo. Yo, you, yes, you. Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure to subscribe for more videos of your favorite fighters over here on Fight Up TV and give us a follow online as well at Fight Up TV on Twitter and on Instagram. We appreciate it, guys.